What's going on guys? Your boy Terabyte Reacts here back with another reaction and tonight guys I have only time to do one video. I'm gonna make it a good one, a long one. Not a really long one. Um but I am gonna do this video because it was highly recommended by you guys um after I did that video, that Oathbreaker video about Jamie. So people are wondering, you know, people are wondering um, if Jamie will die in season eight. And my opinion is, yes, Jamie will die. That is my theory that he will die in season eight. It's the best theory I can see that anybody could come up with. Um, if you have something else in mind, if, I mean, some people think he's going to live long enough to kill Cersei. Um, some people think that, you know, he's going to play a vital role. Maybe there's going to be some tender moments between him apologizing to the Starks, which probably going to end up with John Kilden or something like that. Or he's probably going to be at the mercy of the Starks. Or he'll just give himself up. I see him as that type of person where he's like, what he did. He maybe look look at himself and be like, what he did was not honorable. And he should be punished. And he, he might just do that. Because, I mean, at this point, it doesn't seem like Jamie gives uh, two shits about Cersei. In, in my opinion, right? As um, I'm having a little bit of lighting problem here. I don't know why my camera keeps making me look like a zombie. Shit is annoying. But anyways, yeah. So we're wondering how the Kingslayer, the Oath Keeper, Oath Breaker, whatever you want to call Jamie, how will his story end? And that's what this video is about. So let's jump into it and see what this is all about. This is the only video i'm doing tonight so once you get this there's no more i'm trying to get through all the uh, all the back top stuff that i that i have right now that i have not put out which is that i've reacted to which is peaky blinders episode two the, the walking dead episode two i'm trying to get those out um so i'm working on those tonight but i'm still gonna give you guys take a pause to give you guys a video tonight um those aforementioned um will i'm i'm going to try to get those out over the weekend okay over the weekend so we can get back on the schedule next week because the sickness i'm still not a hundred percent i'm about about 80 percent right now i still have a cold still congestion there so Let's jump into this video, man. See what it's all about. See what this guy has to say. I think it's like 18 minutes long. So let's go. Okay. ...of Shrek's Prince. At the start of Game of Thrones, Jamie Lannister is like an R-rated version of Shrek's Prince Charming. He's an arrogant, selfish, violent <laughs> they look knight just the who roots same, his it? sister and tries to murder a child. Jamie's a bad guy, and it looks like author George Martin originally planned to keep him that way. In an old outline of the series, written before the first book, Martin says that Jamie would become king, taking the throne by murdering everyone in his way. It also says that Sansa would have a child with Joffrey, Tyrion would fall in love with Arya, and that Catelyn would be killed by White Walkers. So the actual story turned out very different to this outline because Martin doesn't like to stick to a plan when he writes. He says that he writes not like an architect, but like a gardener. He lets his characters gradually develop and grow, and he follows where they lead, which means sometimes his characters surprise him and become something he didn't expect. Jamie is a great example of this, because over five books and seven seasons, he grows into someone much more complex than even the author imagined. In the first couple books, Jamie really is just awful. He's arrogant and vain, wearing glittering gilded armor. He's impulsive, reckless, and violent, willing to kill anyone who gets in his way. He tries to kill Bran for seeing him with Cersei. 
he kills three Stark men to intimidate Ned. He implies he'd have hurt or killed Arya if he'd caught her, and he uses cruel words to hurt people. Apart from his twin sister Cersei, his brother Tyrion, and his father Tywin, Jaime doesn't seem to care about anyone or anything. He doesn't believe in anything. He thinks that knights and the Kingsguard are corrupt, that gods and religion are bullshit. When confronted with the evils of the world, Jaime just laughs. Catelyn thinks Jaime is vile. There is nothing here but arrogance and pride. If there was ever a spark of honour in him, it is long dead. Jamie seems irredeemable, but in book three, we start to learn why Jamie is the way he is. Jamie was born the son and heir of the rich and powerful Lord Tywin Lannister. Jamie grew tall and beautiful with golden hair, like his twin Cersei, who he had an incestuous relationship with from a young age. Jamie's other love was the sword. He was a highly skilled fighter, and he dreamed of being a great warrior. When he was 15, he fought outlaws alongside the famous Arthur Dane and was knighted on the battlefield. Later, he joined the Kingsguard, a famed brotherhood sworn to protect the king. Kingsguard can't marry or hold land, so Jamie gave up his claim as the heir to Casterly Rock. But Jamie had never wanted to rule. He wanted honour and glory as a brother of the Kingsguard, and he wanted to be close to Cersei at King's Landing. So at 15, the Kingsguard seemed like everything Jamie had ever wanted, but it soon soured. It turned out that the king, Aerys Targaryen, only took Jamie into the Kingsguard to piss off Tywin and to use Jamie as a sort of a hostage. He'll win no glory here, the king had said. Tywin right. got mad and left the capital with Cersei, separating Jamie from his twin and lover who he joined the guard for in the first place. So Jamie got no Cersei and no glory, and was stuck serving a mad king. Aerys grew more and more violent and cruel. He liked to burn men alive, and he attacked his wife, Rhaella. And since Jamie had sworn to obey, he could only stand and watch, trying to look without seeing the burning men that would haunt him all his life. Eventually, the kingdoms rose against Aerys in Robert's Rebellion, and near the end of the war, Jaime killed Ares, the king he'd sworn to protect. Westerosi society takes sacred oaths seriously, so forever after, Jaime is hated as the kingslayer, an oathbreaker, a man with shit for honour. The irony is that people hate Jaime for the best thing he ever did. We learn in Book 3 that the reason why Jamie killed Ares was that Ares planned to burn down King's Landing, to kill thousands of innocent people with wildfire. Jamie killed the king to save the city, but no one knows this, because after Jamie killed Ares, Eddard Stark arrived and looked at Jamie with cold eyes full of judgement. Ned didn't want to hear Jamie's explanations, he only had to look at him to judge him guilty. So it seems that Jamie felt he couldn't explain the wildfire plot to people, that no one would listen or believe him, but what really gets to Jamie is the judgement. Jamie is haunted by memories of Ned Stark, Prince Rhaegar, the Kingsguard. They represent Jamie's failures, his broken oaths, the blood on his hands, not only of Ares, but of Rhaegar's family, who died under Jamie's watch. Deep down, Jamie's ashamed of the man he became. And the way he deals with this is to hide his insecurities and laugh at everything and pretend he doesn't care. People say he's a bad knight and a bad Kingsguard, so Jamie mocks knighthood and Kingsguard, says it's all corrupt anyway. People say the gods will punish Jamie, so he says the gods aren't real. All his cynicism, sarcasm, nihilism are defense mechanisms to protect him from criticism. It's kind of like what Tyrion says, to wear your identity like armor. Yeah, Tyrion plays the true. imp, Sandor plays the hound, and Jamie plays the callous, uncaring Kingslayer. It's easier to play a villain than to face the pain of old trauma, to grapple with grey morality and the shame and guilt of failure. Jamie distracts himself with the two things that he's good at, fighting with swords and sex with Cersei. Because in combat and sex, you don't have to think about the past or the future. You live only in the moment. Jamie says time sleeps when swords wake. But in book three, Jamie loses these distractions and is forced to face his past and his future. 
Jamie is captured by Rob Stark, and he's freed by Catelyn on the promise that he'll return Sansa and Arya to the Starks. So Jamie travels to King's Landing with Brienne, but along the way they're captured by the Brave Companions, or Locke in the show, who suddenly, brutally, cut off Jamie's hand. His sword hand, the part of him that makes him who he is. It's the hand Jamie used to kill Ares, to cripple Bran, to love Cersei. He loses his glory and his shame, both at once, leaving what? Who am I now? Jamie asks. Proud Jamie Lannister is devastated, brought low. He almost just gives up and dies, but he's urged to live by Brienne. Brienne and Jamie have a complex relationship. At first, they hate each other. Jamie calls Brienne wench and thinks she's a stupid, ugly freak. Brienne calls Jamie Kingslayer and thinks he's a monster for his crimes. But Jamie and Brienne have some things in common. They're both outsiders in society. Jamie is the Kingslayer and Brienne is a misfit female warrior. Eventually, they start to respect each other, not as Kingslayer and wench, but as Jamie and Brienne. They learn from each other. Jamie shows Brienne that doing the right thing can be more complicated than she thought. And Brienne shows Jamie that even in a cruel, complex world, a true knight persists. Even when she fails, even when no one believes in her, Brienne keeps her word and defends the weak and does what's right. And so should Jamie. So Jamie learns from Brienne's example. He heroically rescues Brienne from a bear, and later he gives her a priceless Valyrian sword called Oathkeeper, so Brienne can keep Jamie's oath to return Sansa to the Starks. Sansa is my last chance for honor, Jamie says. So Brienne looks for her, for Catelyn's sake, and for Jamie's. What's the worst part about yes. painting things you don't want? Uh, Paying. And what's the best part about getting things you do want for free? <laughs> free stuff. That's why Sorry for the ads, man. You gotta watch these ads. Supports the, like supports the channel. I like you know? popcorn. How dare you? Buy the latest iPhone. Get iPhone XR on us. Yeah, Verizon. Get an iPhone. <laughs> Jamie returns to King's Landing a changed man. He's gone through hell, he's lost his hand, and he has no more patience for lies and schemes, which frustrates his lying, scheming family. Tywin wants Jamie to leave the Kingsguard and get married and rule the Rock. Jamie refuses, so Tywin disowns him and is later killed by Tyrion. Jamie saves Tyrion from execution, but in the books the brothers have a falling out when Jamie reveals he lied about Tyrion's first wife, Tysha. And from Tyrion, Jaime learns of Cersei's infidelity. He increasingly sees her as a lying, manipulative... Hold on. I want to read what this says. You poor, stupid, blind, crippled fool. Must I spell every little thing out for you very well? Cersei's a lying whore. She's been effing Lanso and Usman Kettleback. And probably Moonboy, for all I know. And I am the monster they all say I am. Yes, I killed your vile son. He made himself grin. He made himself grin. Wow. That's from the books? Wow. <laughs> uh, wow. Tyrion said something like that? That's crazy. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff like, I'm definitely going to have to read the books because the book story is so much more potent. You know what I'm saying? It's much more potent. Um, don't get me wrong. Love the TV series, but, you know, it's just that the books just seems like they, they, they pack a lot more punch. And that, that comes, it comes with the territory of reading books anyway. So that's not very surprising, to be honest. Let's jump back into it. Jamie learns of Cersei's infidelity. He increasingly sees her as a lying, manipulative fool, and Cersei rejects this changed Jamie. So gradually, the lifelong lovers begin to break up. By the end of Book 3, Jamie feels he's lost everything. His sister and lover, his brother, his father, and his hand. Everything that makes him who he is, everything that he loved, is gone. All he has left is the King's Guard, so Jamie turns to the White Book. The White Book records the history of each member of the King's Guard. There are all these great heroes like Arthur Dane, with all these great deeds written in their pages. Jamie's page doesn't say much apart from his killing King Ares. 
but there's still lots of blank space there. Jamie realises he can fill his page, write his future, with whatever he chooses. In the show, Jamie chooses to stand by Cersei for three more seasons, but the books are different. In book four, Jamie travels the Riverlands, mopping up the last of the war, and he starts to build a new identity as a more honourable man. He's sick of people hating him for being an oathbreaker, so he tries to keep his promises to Catelyn, not only by sending Brienne after Sansa, but by ending the Siege of Riverrun without fighting Tully's, which was another of the oaths Jamie made. He starts taking his Kingsguard and Knight's vows more seriously. He protects innocent people like Pia, and gets mad when the mountain kills an innocent boy when Jamie himself had once tried to kill an innocent boy. Jamie does justice, executing criminals and sorting out conflict between Loras and Brienne. Jamie's still often rude and aggressive, but he is less reckless and less arrogant. At one point, he refuses to wear his gold prosthetic hand. Let them see the cripple, Jamie thinks. He would not show the crowds a golden lie. Jamie even starts being nice to people sometimes. He's kind to Pia and Jane Westerling, and lets Lord Blackwood keep his daughter. Jamie even decides to take an interest in his children, Marcella and Tommen. He used to think of his kids as no more than a squirt of seed in Cersei's cunt, but now he decides he wants to help them grow up right, even to tell Marcella that he's her father. He also decides to help fix the politics in King's Landing. So Jamie is trying to build a better legacy for himself. He hopes to be known not just as the Kingslayer, but maybe as Golden Hand, the Just. Ooh, but some people aren't that would convinced. Be nice. <laughs> Edmure and Brynden stand against Jamie, showing that for all his thoughts of reform, Jamie's still the Kingslayer in their eyes. Like, sure, Jamie technically keeps his word to the Tullys at River Run, but he still hands their castle to the Freys as reward for betrayal and slaughter at the Red Wedding, an atrocity plotted by Tywin, who Jamie emulates with his trebuchet threat. Ultimately, Jamie's still serving the brutal regime that killed King Robert, crowned a bastard, savaged the Riverlands, fought a whole terrible war that all started with Jamie's incest and the crippling of Bran. If Jamie really wants to be a better person, if he wants redemption, surely he must somehow answer for his crimes. True. How else can he escape the judgment and trauma that haunts him? If Jamie's to have a brighter future, he must face his past. Catelyn Stark is murdered at the Red Wedding. In the books, she's then resurrected as Lady Stoneheart, transformed into a terrible, vengeful spirit. She takes over the Brotherhood Without Banners and leads them to hunt down and kill everyone involved in the Red Wedding. In Book 4, Stoneheart captures Brienne and threatens to kill her unless Brienne brings her Jaime. In Book 5, it looks like Brienne does, taking Jaime to Stoneheart somewhere in the Riverlands. You can see Stoneheart as a symbol of the evil in Jaime's past, a monument to all his sins. Catelyn is the mother of the boy Jamie crippled to cover up incest. Catelyn is the wife of Ned Stark, whose judgment haunts Jamie as Kingslayer. Catelyn is the woman Jamie promised he'd save Sansa and Arya, who still aren't home in the books. And Catelyn's a Stark, the family that Jamie's family all but destroyed. So Stoneheart could represent Jamie's guilt and regret. But unlike the Kingsguard and Rhaegar and Ned, Stoneheart lives in the flesh. There is no ignoring her, no more excuses or distractions. This could be the big confrontation between Jaime and his past. Will he be consumed by the dark and hanged with Stoneheart's other victims? Or will he make peace with these demons and rise up a better man? Not just someone who talks about honour and justice, but someone who rights his wrongs. There are all sorts of possibilities. Jamie could join the Brotherhood for Red Wedding Revenge, maybe finally find Sansa or Arya, or maybe it'll be more about putting Stoneheart to rest with the help of Brienne. We won't know for sure till the next book comes out. But Jamie probably will survive Stoneheart, because Jamie's destiny is with Cersei. Jamie has loved Cersei all his life. He joined the Kingsguard for her, fathered bastards with her, tried to kill kids for her. Cersei brings out the worst in Jaime, all his vanity, violence, cruelty. If Jaime's to be a better person, he needs to face his twin. And the thing is, Cersei is obsessed with a prophecy that says she'll be killed by her brother, 
She thinks this means Tyrion, but fans suspect that it means Jaime. Remember, in the show, Cersei blows up the Great Sept with wildfire. There are hints she'll use wildfire in the books as well, but she won't just blow up the Great Sept. Fans believe that Cersei may try to burn the whole city of King's Landing, just like Ares tried to do years ago. Jaime may have to save the city again by killing his sister. That would fulfill the Valenqual prophecy, and it could represent Jaime finally defeating his darker half. It could also mean Jaime's death. Because the twins both believe that just as they were born together, they will die together. This could be self-sacrifice by Jaime, heroically, tragically dying with his lover in fire. The twins came into the world so similar, but they'll die so different. Cersei dies consumed with fear and hate, but Jaime could die a hero, finally a knight worthy of the White Book. And Jaime might have an even higher destiny. Some people argue that Jaime may be Azora High, the hero prophesied to save the world from the White Walkers, using a burning sword called Lightbringer. Jaime does have a mystical dream of doom where he wields a flaming sword that pushes back darkness, and there are some weird connections in the Valyrian language invented for the show. The words for gold and hand are similar to the words for lord and light, the god connected to Azora High. And Jaime's arc could loosely fit the story of the forging of Lightbringer, tempering his swords first in water, then in the heart of a lion, then in his beloved wife. Cersei could be the sacrifice, and if Jaime dies with her, he could then be reborn amidst smoke and salt as Azora High, his hand transformed into a burning weapon, Lightbringer. So this is sort of plausible, if you fudge some other bits of the prophecy and believe Jaime is actually secretly Ares' son, but overall it doesn't seem that likely. Because Jamie's story isn't about the mystical fight of ice and fire. Leave that stuff to John and Daenerys. Jamie may play some role in the fight against the Walkers, that's where he's going in the show with his black cloak and Valyrian sword, but Jamie's real war is in his heart, trying to define his identity in a dark and complex world. And that's not about White Walkers. That's between Jamie and Ares and Brienne and Stoneheart and Cersei. Thanks for watching. If you want to read more about Jamie, there are some really great posts on Tumblr and Reddit to check out. Links in the description. Thanks also to fan artists Sir Clegane, Eluas, Katie Hillman, and Ertach Altinos. Old Shift X is made possible by our patrons. If you want to support high quality, carefully researched content on Game of Thrones and more, please support us on. All right. <clears throat> My throat is gone. Anyways, um, that was a pretty well put together theory. Um, of course, a lot of that stuff is new information for me because I have not read the books. Um, <clears throat> it's awesome. It's an awesome theory. Uh, I like. I would love if it was Jamie that took out, um, Cersei. Even though I don't think. That's what's going to happen in season eight on the TV show. Just a series I'm talking about. Um, I see that ending happening in the books. I don't see that happening in the series. Um, from what he's explaining, I think that would be the best way to go. It's just be um, before the, I started reacting to the video. Uh, I talked about the very same thing where I was saying that I think for him to kind of restore his honor, I think the best thing for him to do would be to go lay his sword at John's feet or, you know what I'm saying, and to apologize and let them know what he did to Bran and to see what the punishment would be. I think John being we his, I don't believe John would kill him. And I believe Bran would say, listen, he has a higher purpose there's no need to kill him. He did what he did. I. It is because of what he did why I ended up being the Three-Eyed Raven. If it wasn't for him that started this whole thing, I would not be in the position I am now to lead you guys through this war. So there's no need to kill Jamie. Let's forgive. Let's forget. Well, not forget, 
but let's forgive because John has forgiven people in the past. He's forgiven Theon. He's forgiven people has done very vile things to his to to the Stark family. So, um, well, Cersei deserves no forgiveness whatsoever. She deserves. She's but she. I mean, don't get me wrong. Tyrion was never for the Red Wedding. As a matter of fact, he never knew anything about it. Tywin set that up all by himself. Um, I don't even think I don't remember if Jaime knew about it. I don't, I don't remember if I don't remember if he knew about it. But um, regardless of 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 whatever happens, I do believe that his redemption is not complete unless. I see some sort of confession towards that. And I think it would be nice if Brienne urges him, even though he has, even though Brienne doesn't know that he's the one that did it, um, maybe he will confess to someone, namely Brienne, and Brienne will say, listen, you have to tell them this. You have to let them know. See what the punishment is. You have to remain, as, as, as what they said, Brienne kind of taught him how to be honorable yes you're gonna have slips and falls by the way but you have to keep going to remain honorable do try to do the right thing at all times and i think at this point the right thing for for jamie to do um is priority when he gets to winterfell when he goes there to support them for the war i think that that's one of the first things he should do because i know his conscience is going to be killing him when he sees bran and bran is um, and all that memory is going to rush back to bran um and i think bran is probably going to be the one to say listen have mercy you know what i'm saying because i think john is going to look at him and be like it's your call bro it's your call you know so my thing is that jamie is he's um he is number five on my top five. I don't know if you guys know this, but he is. Because right now, my top five characters, I'll name them for you. It's John, Daenerys, Arya. Sansa is not in my top five. Brienne and Jamie. Those are my top five characters right now. Because they've dumbed down Tyrion so much, he dropped out of my top five. Still love him, but he's not in his story's not as interesting anymore i'm sorry guys and and that's the thing and i understand where you guys were coming from from i mean from from the whole thing from from Tyrion coming from um from he killed T um tywin man they've just dumbed this character down so much it's just he's basically a drunk and it was, don't get me wrong, he had some very cool moments, you know, advising Daenerys, helping Daenerys, getting across, you know, the narrow sea and all of that good stuff. But at the same time, it was like they dumbed him down so much, man, from the brilliant guy that we've come to know from season one that was slapping Joffrey in the face and all this other stuff. The character that I loved, that, I, that was number two on my list even before Daenerys, you know what I mean, it, it's just, you know, he's falling out of my top five, um, so Jamie is in my top five, and the reason being is because his story is so much more interesting at this point, and in time, you know what I'm saying, I've never mentioned that before, but now you guys know, now you know my entire top five at this moment, Brienne is in my top five, why, because I want to see where her story is, ends right i want to see where her story ends sans is not in my top five because i think her journey is over i think her getting back to winterfell being the lady of winterfell is all she wanted and her getting rid of little finger i think her story is done there's nothing more for sansa to accomplish she's done what she needs to do now she just needs to hold winterfell down and you know just do what she needs to do to help with the war as she can because at this moment she don't know how to fight um she might know a little bit about strategy and playing the game but i think she's just gonna become just another manipulative character in the show that has heart you know what i'm saying she's another virus you get what i'm saying 
So to me, that that's just this my theory, guys. This is just this me and my opinion of Sansa. I'm not saying that Sansa is a terrible character for the show, um, or anything like that. Still love her. Still love her character on the show. She has. I just believe that her journey throughout the show is done. Season eight, you're not. I don't think you're gonna see much of her. If she, if they do put her to the forefront a lot she's just gonna be in the me the meetings on, on when they're figuring out what to do you get what i'm saying how they're gonna fight the white walkers like she's gonna be included in stuff like that you know what i'm saying or she's gonna be the one that's like hey keep an eye on what's going on down here make sure cersei ain't making no moves behind our backs to take us out after we you know go take care of these white walkers i think that's gonna be her role you get what i'm saying but it's not gonna be anything like super major like she's gonna be you know what i'm saying riding into battle or anything like that no we expect Arya to be doing that you know what i'm saying because it's all about the war right now it's all about the war going into season eight thank you guys for watching man now you have my my opinion on this all i made i made sure that i went above and beyond for this video because i'm only doing one for you guys to tonight so love y'all man appreciate y'all if it's the first time you see me react consider subscribing to the channel hit that notification bell also leave a like on the, on this video and leave a comment in the comment section as i said man i can't tell you guys how much i appreciate y'all for continue to support the channel even after i stop um reacting to game of thrones um you know the, the the series ended and season seven episode seven ended you guys have just been champs and got new subscribers and the new subscribers that are coming in to watch the new shows thank y'all for tuning in hope you guys watch the game of thrones reactions and get to love the shows just like how we do if you have not watched it thank you guys for tuning in you already know who it is it's your boy terabyte reacts and peace